Hello, this is Dana Arcuri, author, speaker, survivor, and advocate. How's everyone doing? Happy February 1st to all of you. I hope you're having a beautiful new month and we have so much to look forward to. Today's video may, may be just a little bit different than normal. It is going to be up close and personal and I'm going to just keep it real over here. A lot of times on my YouTube videos, I try to be as transparent and as authentic as possible. You know, my life is oftentimes an open book where I am willing to put myself out there and to show up and to speak about topics that are very, very difficult to talk about. Topics that may be painful for some people, including myself, and yet, the reason I really try to be present and speak about those hard to talk about subjects, especially involving any form of abuse or sexual trauma and what have you, is because there are so many stigmas within our world. You know, we have the stigma of mental health, the rape stigma, the dysfunctional family stigma, the narcissistic abuse stigma. I mean, there's just so many stigmas, you know, about medicine, about our life experiences, about depression, about suicide, about so many topics. And a lot of people, they cringe. You know, they don't want to put themselves out there. A lot of times I've noticed the people who basically prefer to put a smile on their face and act like everything's okay and carry on and might have some very uplifting messages. You know, they may very well have some inspiring messages but they don't put themselves out there. And just the other day, I watched a YouTuber who I am a fan of, and for the first time, she was very, very transparent and authentic and so bravely put herself out there sharing her own hard rock moments and the various things that she went through in 2020, as well as what's going on in her life in 2021. And you know what? I so appreciate people who are like that, who even despite the fear of what others will think about you and that others may judge you and others may condemn you and others may not agree with you because, hey, we know on social media that there's a lot of people who want to rear their ugly heads when they disagree with us and they harshly will condemn us and judge us and give us two thumbs down and the whole thing. And yet, you know, it is those people who are transparent, who do have strength and courage and authenticity and their empaths and their beautiful, beautiful souls who do show up and, and, and they show up in such a very raw way, a very real way that we connect to them on a personal level. And that's what I want. You know, that is always my goal is not just to put out educational content on YouTube. I mean, hey, I'm going into my 10 year anniversary, people. 10 years being a YouTube creator. And, you know, it takes a lot of work to create a video, to do the research, to get the lighting right, the sound right, the clothing right. I mean, hello, get the makeup right, you know, and, and thank you for all you people. I mean, there are so many people through the years who have been so inspiring, so motivational, so appreciative, so encouraging. You know, you have become my friends from a distance and at a distance we connect. And this is really what makes YouTube so beautiful. You know, this platform where we can share a wide variety of educational content, but also get up close, get personal, and share from the heart. Share from the heart, because that's what matters. And that is what really can help us connect with others. You know, on a real personal level, you know, great minds think alike. You know, I've always said that, great minds think alike. And while we think alike, we may have many differences. You know, we may come from totally different places, but yet our stories may overlap. And there are some things that I share, you know, whether it is about having a narcissistic mother who passed away last year, whether it is having toxic siblings, and maybe you do too, whether it is talking about sexual abuse and trauma recovery and complex PTSD, and those really hard places of when I had been on medication 10 years ago, and had a near-death experience, very hellish ordeal. And so many of you have showed up, you know, and you have been there 
for me. And, and I can say that, you know, this is what makes my heart sing, is when we show up for one another and we could say, me too. I've experienced something similar to you. Or I had a medication that also had that negative side effect. Or I also had a relative who did A, B, C, D, and now I went, no contact. Or I also had to set boundaries and really change my life to start healing and recovering and to step into my true essence, you know, this person who I was created to be. And so there's so much we can bring to the table. And I always question, you know, what do I share on YouTube? And, you know, it's just like people who are bloggers. You know, there are times we have ideas and it's like click, 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 and we just are writing away and typing away. And there are times I instantly have so many ideas for YouTube. And then there's other times where I'm perplexed. I worked so hard at certain videos. I've done so much extensive research. I've put myself out there. I've shared from a place of transparency and authenticity. And yet those videos may not even get as many views. So it is mystifying to me when this happens, but I cannot play the um, comparison game. You know, there is that whole comparison trap where you start comparing yourself to someone else, whether it's on Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, or what have you. And we can't do that. You know, the truth is this, you know, those who are meant to hear my message or read my message they'll cross my path. You know, I really believe that when we do show up and we come from a very authentic place and, you know, we're real and we're very, very courageous and have the guts and the grit to put ourselves out there, I really do believe that the right people will cross our path for the right time, for the right purpose, for whatever positivity could come from it. And this is why I keep showing up. You know, there's plenty of times I thought about saying goodbye to YouTube, um, especially last year. I really thought hard about it. I had some struggles and challenges, and I just decided that, you know what, I'm going to keep living my life. And as long as I am breathing, as long as I am still feeling self-motivated to do so, I'm going to keep showing up and putting new content on there, you know, with you, with YouTube and with social media. And, and you know, the bottom line is this, someone needs to hear your message. Someone needs to hear my message. And together, together, we can unite peacefully and we can make a positive difference in the world around us. And oftentimes, this is how we do connect to others. This is how we find others, especially on social media, is we have something in common. We might share at least one or more things. And so keeping that in mind, um, I have to say that, you know, there are times I question, do I keep talking about narcissistic abuse? And the truth is this, while I can grow weary and it can be draining and exhausting to have different YouTube content that covers everything under the sun to do with narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder, toxic siblings, dysfunctional families, gaslighting, manipulation, and on and on that goes. The, the truth is this, you know, I have survived it. I am on the other side, you know, while it is, you know, different for everyone what they go through. And while everyone may have their own challenges right this moment because they're in a different place than I am. You know, maybe they're in a newer stage of recovery. Maybe they're just getting educated about narcissistic abuse. Maybe they just want no contact and they are so, so tempted to get back in touch with that person who hurt them, that person who brainwashed them, that person who betrayed them. And you know what? Um, there is no judgment. There is no judgment. This channel DanaArcuri.com is a safe space. I consider it a sacred space to reach out to all walks of life, no matter who you are, no matter where you live, no matter what you've been through. This is my soul mission. And a lot of times I feel comfortable just sharing my own personal experiences. And so the newest one is that I'm getting ready to go back to school for certified trauma recovery. And it's a coaching program. And in doing so, there's a lot of books that I have to read. And so I wanted to share the one book 
here it is. It's Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving by Pete Walker. And so the reason why I'm sharing this book is because I personally have been pleasantly surprised and sometimes shocked at some of the content I'm reading. And I'm happy though that Pete Walker has written very valuable content in his book where he covers narcissistic abuse very thoroughly. And being that I have survived narcissistic abuse as well as dysfunctional families, child abuse and sexual assault, and I do have complex PTSD. It is so meaningful, so rewarding, and so enlightening when you read about this author who also went through very similar experiences. So he's coming from the point of view where he is a survivor. So Pete Walker is not only an author and not only a teacher and not only someone who's very, very knowledgeable, experienced and trauma informed, but he's also a survivor and he understands narcissistic abuse because he dealt with it himself. And I think what I love about this book is that it shares some really important things. It shares about trauma bonding. It shares about being bullied and the after effect. You know, there is a toll of trauma for anyone who has been maliciously, uh, verbally and mentally abused. Um, and so we understand that whether it was your toxic sibling, whether it was your grandparents, a spouse, a relationship, uh, a mother, a father, what have you, in which you did suffer from narcissistic abuse, we have to understand that it is greatly linked to emotional trauma. And oftentimes it goes hand in hand with mental abuse because there's a lot of gaslighting, a lot of manipulation, a silencing, just horrifying things that take place in homes all across our world. And I really think that even if you did not experience or get diagnosed with complex PTSD, I personally believe that if you have suffered narcissistic abuse or even like sibling bullying, anything across the line to do with like mental abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, I personally believe that this book is just absolutely valuable. I highly recommend it. I think it has so much to offer. Um, right now I'm on the chapters to do with the various ways that trauma is is showing up in our body. And so the trauma response is considered, there's the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response. And so there's four responses and everyone responds differently. Some people may actually have like this overlap where you might have sometimes a freeze or a fawn response. Everyone's different, but I think it's just valuable and that's why I'm sharing about this book today. Another thing that I really feel is important to share, especially because of this week, so the first week of February 2021, is considered Sexual Violence and Sexual Abuse Awareness Week. And so while I know many of my viewers are not just survivors of like the bullying and the gaslighting and possibly narcissistic abuse or toxic siblings, but many have shared their Me Too stories also. And they have shared about whether it was as a child they were sexually abused or molested, whether it was a, as an adult or as a teenager or various times in your life. And because I know so many people are watching my videos who have dealt with one form or another of abuse, I really believe this is a topic that needs to be discussed, that we need to break the um, the stigma, you know, the stigma of the shame of being a survivor. You know, there is no shame of being a survivor of any form of abuse because number one, it's not your fault. Number two, you are not responsible for someone else's words, thoughts, or actions and behaviors. And number three, we cannot take on someone else's responsibility for the crime they made. We can only, only 
work our way through and process our trauma. We could accept what happened. We could understand what happened and we could do the hard work of recovery. But we have to understand that we are not at fault. You know, the only one at fault are the abusers and the toxic people, you know, and while they may deny it, they may take it to the grave. They may never, ever, ever say, I'm sorry. We don't need an apology. You know, at this point, an apology is meaningless because what's done is done. And I really believe in trauma recovery. What's most important, what's really crucial to our recovery is instead to focus on ourselves, to focus on what is our trauma response? Are we getting stuck in the freeze mode or the flight mode? You know, a lot of times people will disassociate or they'll be hypervigilant. Um, some people have repressed memories. There's just so much that goes into trauma. So nevertheless, um, I think that there's a few things that we need to chat about today. And once again, you know, I am so much of a believer in showing up to talk about these hard to discuss subjects such as sexual assault and sexual violence. But we need to. We need to end the violence and we need to start talking about it because this is how people heal. Um, we have to understand that when you start sharing your story and you are transparent and you are real and you're sharing this raw, raw, painful story, you're touching lives in such a positive way. You are helping to heal other souls. I mean, this is the most beautiful thing that you could do in your lifetime by having this purpose, by reaching out to others, by advocating, by building awareness, by educating others, we have to understand this is so valuable and so needed, especially on YouTube. Um, next, um, these are some statistics and, you know, I don't like getting sometimes too caught up in statistics, but sometimes, huh, we need to hear it because once it soaks in, wow, we can understand that it's, it's something serious. So in statistics, one in four women and one in six men will experience sexual violence. According to Rain.com, they're known as Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network. They state eight out of ten rapes are committed by someone who the victim knows. So this means that, and this is statistics too, 55% of trauma survivors who did suffer sexual assault in one form or another, 55% of them experienced this sexual assault in their home. Whoa, that speaks volumes in itself. Um, now, there's some things that, again, I feel like we have to keep repeating it because the more I read people's tweets and posts, on social media, I come to find out that not everybody's on the same wavelength and some people do need educated. And so this needs to be said. You know, I wish I didn't have to say this. I wish everybody was educated and had trauma-informed information and knowledge and awareness and sensitivity. And they were really compassionate people who could just listen and just sit in that sacred space with survivors and not judge them and not condemn them and not tell them it's your fault, you deserved it or you asked for it, okay? So I wish that we lived in a world where there was peace and unity and love and there was not shame and blame and all this ugliness. But here's what I have to say. We don't just get over sexual assault. We don't just move on from sexual trauma, okay? So people who want to lash out and bash us or shame us or blame us, and we have seen it all over social media. We have seen it on the internet, and this is something that really needs to come to an end. I mean, we need to end sexual violence, but we also need to end these misconceptions. You know, let's, let's really keep it real, people. Nobody asked to be raped. Nobody asked to be traumatized. Nobody asked to be hurt. Nobody asked for CPTSD or any form of mental illness. And so we really, really need to 
have a whole lot more understanding, sensitivity, empathy, and just selflessness to instead of bashing people and trying to narrate their story, instead to just sit with them in that safe space. And if we have nothing to bring to the table that's positive, to just not give feedback. And that is as real as I can get today about that topic. Next is we can understand that there are lingering symptoms of sexual abuse and violence that will go on for decade after decade, especially for those victims who did bury it, repress it. They may have tried to run from the trauma and the painful, painful sexual assaults. It may, been ha it may have been so daunting. It may have been so grueling, so excruciating that they just need to block it out. And, and this is something that many of you may not even be aware of, but this is a common response to sexual trauma. So people can disassociate. When you disassociate, it's almost like you become another person. It's almost like you step out of that body of that poor child or that poor teenager or adult who was violated and you detach from them. And oftentimes, everyone responds so differently. You know, we respond in a very unique way because we have different backgrounds and we have different response methods and everyone has their own way of dealing with sexual abuse and violence. But understand there's no two paths that are the only way. You know, there's so many different roads to healing and, and for trauma recovery. And we shall not judge. We shall not tell people and demand people to forgive the abuser and to just get over it and just move on and just get thicker skin. Whew, I get really hot and feisty over this one, people. Like, I can't tell you how many times I have dealt with this. And that is why, that is why I speak about it today. Because my own sisters and their husbands and their families have done that to me. I understand what it feels like to be isolated, to have someone gaslighting you and to have someone who is twisting the truth and they're telling you, you need to just get over your issues. That's what I was told. I need to get over my issue. And they made a big beef like, but why did it take her so long to talk about it? And the reason why, not for everyone, remember this is very unique. We cannot compare ourselves to any other survivor. But in some cases, trauma survivors will process their trauma at different times in their life. And they may go decade after decade with it buried so far down in the depth of their soul that it takes something like the Harvey Weinstein sex scandal in 2017 to wake them up to finally say, me too, me too. And to start sharing their story. And so for me, I kept it buried. I ran from it. I hid from it. I concealed it. I tried everything under the sun when I was in my teenage years and my 20s and my 30s and even my 40s to just kind of push it down. But guess what happens when you push down your painful trauma? It will haunt you. It will show up in flashbacks. It will show up in triggers. It will show up in nightmares. It will show up with chronic pain. And then you may end up like me, diagnosed with fibromyalgia and complex PTSD. And you finally are confronted with a therapist who tells you, my dear, it's time for you to heal. And so today, I come to you from a very raw and real place that you are not alone, my friend. I hear your soul cry. Trauma does crush our spirit. It does hurt like hell, but there is hope for healing. And so whatever you have gone through, understand that my page, DanaArcuri.com, is a sacred space on YouTube for you to feel comfortable, to be yourself, that I 
open the door for every walk of life, wherever you are coming from, to sit with you, to not judge you, to just listen to you, to offer you prayer and positive thoughts and wonderful positive vibes and to just be real with you and help you along your own trauma recovery. Please share with me your experiences. Share with me if someone ever told you to get over your abuse or to just move on. Were you ever verbally attacked when you shared your true story? If so, keep on sharing, keep on talking because us truth seekers, we are turning this world on fire and we are going to end the stigma of sexual trauma and sexual abuse. If you'd like to share your story, I'd love to hear more. Thank you and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.